So let's take a closer look at the theory of continental drift, and let's talk about the evidence that Alfred Wegener used to come up with his theory. So you've seen many maps in your life, and like Alfred Wegener, you've probably noticed that certain continents appear to fit together. Well, this was discovered actually back in the 1600s when the first accurate maps were created. Now, these maps were based on the observations of sailors and navigators like Columbus and Magellan and all of those navigators that you learned about earlier on in social studies. And when you look at these maps, you can see that, you know, for the most part, the continents are in the right places. There are certainly things that are incorrect. For example, this is Antarctica, um, which is way too big on this map, and it's actually touching South America. And of course, the shape of South America is a little bit off. But in general, we would sort of call these the first accurate maps. Well, way back then, even geographers noticed that the continents looked like they fit together. But no one really paid any attention to them because there was no proof of this. In the year 1912, Alfred Wegener, who was a German meteorologist, yeah, he actually studied weather. In fact, he studied, spent a lot of time in Greenland, and he was the first person to send thermometers up in balloons to try to record the temperature up in the atmosphere. But anyway, he discovered again, or he realized that the continents look like they fit together. And he even went so far to propose this radical theory that the continents were once in a giant supercontinent called Pangaea. Well, people went ballistic. They went absolutely crazy, claiming that he had no evidence of this. So Wegener spent the rest of his career trying to gather evidence to support his claim. So he eventually had enough evidence and he put together this formal theory of his called continental drift. And his evidence was based on a few different things. So let's go through some of Wegener's evidence. So the first piece of evidence was yes, the continents seem to fit together. If we look at the coast of South America and we look at the west coast of Africa, they look like they fit together. If we could push them together, they would fit. Same thing is true with the coast of North America and Europe and the northern part of Africa there. We can also see some places over here on the west coast of Greenland and on the east coast of Canada. Those appear to fit together. We have areas such as Madagascar down over here, which looks like it could fit in either here or here. We have things that would fit into Australia. This island of Papua New Guinea over there looks like it fits in. So there's all of this evidence. Uh, you know, is it just a coincidence or were these continents really once together? The second piece of evidence that Wegener found was he found evidence that fossils of the same creatures had been found on many different continents. Now, this creature that you're looking at there, this is a Mesosaurus. A Mesosaurus was a reptile that lived in fresh water. According to Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution, when a new creature appears on Earth, it only shows up on one place and then it can travel to different parts of the world. So if we go with Darwin's theory, Mesosaurus would have only showed up on one continent. Now fossils of this lizard have been found in South America and Africa. It was a freshwater lizard. It would not have been able to live in salt water, and it certainly would not have been able to swim across the Atlantic Ocean if the Atlantic Ocean was as big as it is today. There are many other fossils that have been found on different continents, and the same thing is true. You've got this creature called a Sinonathus. This was a land reptile. It only lived on land, but fossils of it have been found on South America and Africa. There is no way that this creature could have gotten across the Atlantic Ocean. Then you have other reptiles like the Lystrosaurus, whose fossils have been found on Antarctica and India and Africa. 
and Madagascar over there. Well, again, there's no way that a land reptile is swimming across oceans. So all of this evidence supports the idea that the continents were once together and the creatures were able to walk across the continents. On a related note, fossils of tropical plants have been found on Antarctica. So this plant over here, this Glossopteris or Glossopteris, uh, fossils have been found all over Antarctica. Well, we know that Antarctica is not exactly what we'd call tropical. So this suggests that at one point it was tropical. Well, we know that tropical places are only found near the equator. So the inference that we could make is that Antarctica must have once been near the equator. And since that time, it has drifted south. Fourth piece of evidence. If you want to take photos of spotted cats, like jaguars or leopards or panthers, there's only two continents you're going to find those creatures. And they are South America and Africa. So again, if we go with Charles Darwin and we say that spotted cats had to appear in one place on Earth and then they could migrate, well, we know that these animals are not swimming across the Atlantic Ocean. So Africa and South America must have been closer together and the spotted cats were able to roam freely. Fifth piece of evidence uh, comes with from studying rocks. So Wagner found evidence of mountains that are in the United States. We think about the Adirondacks, the Appalachians, and he studied the kind of rock they are and the age that they are. Interestingly enough, turns out that if you compare the mountains in New York and the US to the mountains in England and Scandinavia, turns out they are exactly the same age and exactly the same kind of rock. Now, perhaps that's a coincidence, but perhaps it's not. Perhaps these continents were once together and there was a giant mountain range. And when the continents broke apart, half the mountains ended up on North America and half of the mountains ended up in Europe. A similar piece of evidence comes from studying where certain minerals are found. Diamonds are a great example. The two areas on Earth where most diamonds are mined happen to be South America and Africa. So again, perhaps it's a coincidence, perhaps not. Perhaps the diamonds formed millions of years ago when those two continents were together. The seventh piece of evidence has to do with glaciers. And we're going to learn about glaciers later in the year. But they are sometimes called rivers of ice. You could see this glacier here. Uh, this picture was taken in Canada. Well, when glaciers move, what they do is they create these scratch marks or these striations. Glacial striations have been found on every continent on the planet. Again, there are places today that are tropical. Glaciers don't exist in tropical areas. So this suggests that at some point, all of the continents were in areas that were much colder, meaning they were near the North or South Pole. We'll learn a lot more about glaciers later on in the year. Another piece of evidence that Wigner looked at were deposits of coal. Now, if you remember from when we studied rocks and minerals, coal is formed from plant remains that are compacted together over millions of years. Well, these plants tend to be tropical. Again, if we look at where coal is found, coal is found all over Antarctica. It's found up in Canada. It's found even in Siberia. Well, these are not tropical places today, at least. But in the past, they might have been closer to the equator where they would have been covered with these tropical jungles, like in this picture here. So again, another piece of evidence that the continents most likely drifted or they moved. So Wegener, again, proposed this radical idea. He called the supercontinent Pangaea. Now, Pan um, in Latin means all, and Gia or Gaia means Earth. So Pangaea or Pangaea 
which means all earth or all land, is a very appropriate name. And this is what Pangaea would have looked like according to Wegener. So you can make out the United States, and here's Africa with all the different countries. China would have been way on the other side of the earth, past the North Pole. So that's Pangaea. Now, according to Wegener, and again, he has evidence of this, Pangaea was around 225 million years ago. Sometime after that, it started to break apart, and it turned into two giant land masses called Laurasia and Gondwanaland. Now, this map shows what we think the Earth looked like in the Triassic period, which was about 200 million years ago. Eventually, Laurasia and Gondwanaland broke apart into the continents that we have today. So Laurasia formed North America, Europe, and Asia, and Gondwanaland broke apart into South America, Africa, Antarctica, India, now, you might be thinking, hey, wait a minute, India is not a continent. Well, you're right. Today, it's not a continent, but it actually used to be. And then Australia. So back in the Jurassic period, you could see the continents were breaking apart. In the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago, they were moving further apart. And of course, today, the continents are where they currently are. You'll notice on here that India, at some point, here was India over here. At some point, it collided in with Asia, and they became joined together. So this whole theory is called continental drift. If you look in your reference table on page 9, uh, pages 8 and 9 are the geologic time scale. And all the way on the right side of page 9, we have these maps that show us where we think or where we believe the Earth's land masses once were. If you go down to the bottom of the map, this was 458 million years ago. And that little red dot there, that's New York. You'll notice that New York back then was actually in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, this line is the equator. By 359 million years ago, New York was right on the equator. And then slowly it started to travel further north. 119 million years ago, it was above 30 degrees north. By 59 million years ago, it was closer to where it is today. So great resource here in your reference table. If you're ever asked any questions about where the continents were or where they might be heading to, you can always look at these maps and put together uh, this whole idea of where these continents were. So. You might be wondering what happened to Alfred Wegener and his theory. Well, Wegener went on another expedition to Greenland. Like I said, he was a meteorologist. And unfortunately, he got separated from his group and he got stuck in a blizzard. And he died uh, from exposure. He died from, from being too cold and being lost. And his group found his body a couple of days later and they buried him there. But this was just another case where a scientist came up with a claim and the scientific community didn't believe it, didn't pay attention to it until after the scientist had died. So we're going to learn about what happened next. Um, several years later, about 50 or 60 years later, another scientist collected evidence which actually supported Wegener's claim. And the story of plate tectonics continues from there. So we'll get into that more in the next couple of days.